The name Smoketown is most often attributed to the smoke that filled the air from the brick kilns which populated the area prior to the 1880s. Between 1865 and 1940, the central part of Smoketown solidified into one of the densest and poorest yet most vibrant African American neighborhoods in Louisville. The House and Projects namesake was Reverend William Henry Shepherd, one of Smoketown's most widely celebrated leaders. Shepherd, a Presbyterian minister, traveled to the Free State of Congo in Central Africa as a missionary in 1890. He became an internationally recognized defender of human rights as he documented Belgian atrocities in the Congo connected with rubber manufacturing. In 1910, he moved to Louisville and became the pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church in 1912, where he worked to improve the Smoketown neighborhood. For the residents, Shepherd Square was the heart of Smoketown. When you think of Smoketown, you think of Shepherd Square. When you think of Shepherd Square, you think of Smoketown. The Shepherd Square public housing complex stemmed from the United States Housing Act of 1937, which established a permanent federal commitment to provide low-income housing for the nation's poor population. The act created the United States Housing Authority that was charged with administering a decentralized public housing program to be run by local authorities such as the Louisville Municipal Housing Authority, later called the Louisville Metro Housing Authority. Best described as functional moderism, the 36 residential buildings which made up Shepherd Square were situated on 16.5 acres in the heart of Smoketown. Shepherd Square and Grace Community Center quickly forged a supportive relationship that many residents define as foundational to the personal success and the neighborhood's family-like environment. My name is Lavelle White, producer and director of More Than Bricks and Mortar Smoketown, A New Beginning. The purpose of this documentary is to discuss the revitalization of the Smoketown community. Even though it's had its struggles before, Smoketown is moving in the right direction to bring about positive change to the metro community. redevelopments of public housing sites also involve you know a lot of private money but you, you gotta you gotta start somewhere and and it starts with government and it should start with government I made my way here after moving through some of the smokiest mines. I always wondered what the North would look like. Halfway expected to be made out of milk and honey the way my daddy talked about it. There is nothing civil about war, my father used to say. And I was just a boy in those days. Son of a sharecropping ex-military man. He said, we're going to create life in the North. Said we was going to some place where we can start over. You see, the war found itself dying on land my family had worked for over a century. But we gonna create life, my mama said. I didn't care. At that age, family was all I did have. But I remember when I first laid eyes on Smoketown. Factories that lined the streets like rows of crops had what looked like gray cotton shooting from the roof. See, I thought that's where they made rain clouds. Sure enough, my daddy found a job in one of the factories. Told me that they made bricks there. 
told me that those bricks was building us a foundation in this city. Said that those bricks gave us food and comfort and shelter. Those bricks took my daddy's life and gave us one at the same time. Now he buried somewhere around here. It's probably where I end up too. I'm really starting to get used to the smell though. Smell like fire and freedom. Smoke Town at, at a point in time presently where we have the opportunity to make Smoke Town a destiny, a neighborhood of choice for folks throughout Jefferson County who are wanting to live, um, you know, in, a, in an urban environment or in, a, in a downtown setting. Of all the districts that, of all the neighborhoods that I have in my uh, council district, I always like Smoke Town the most. You know, they always say you're not supposed to choose if you have kids. One child is not supposed to be your favorite. Same thing is true in council district. You're not going to have one neighborhood that's more, um, that you like more than the others. But I've always said that um, about Smoke Town. And the reason being is, one, I think I've always been drawn to the rich history uh, of Smoke Town and also the pride of former residents that they've had. Smoke Town has had a lot of really, really great, fun memories for me. All I still got is positive memories, straight up, you know what I mean? And, uh, a strong influence, you know what I mean? Smoketown was wonderful. The people were wonderful. It was a friendly community. Anybody that once lived in Smoketown always claimed Smoketown. You look where it is. I mean, it's it's just a stone's throw away from from the areas north of Broadway that encompass the Central Business District, the hospitals. Um, it's a, you know just a, a couple of minutes away from Old Louisville from West Louisville, from U of L, from the Highlands, so it's it's a great location. I think Smoketown's really important to Louisville uh, first and foremost because it's the oldest African American community in the city of Louisville. And history that is that important, uh, I think, deserves a, a place uh, in a city, I think it deserves to be treasured and to be valued, and then also to be carried forward. And uh, so I think that its, it's place in the, the history of not only our city, but of our state is a really, really important one. It's important to us, to our young people, and to us as staff, and to our board, to make sure that whatever we can do to be a partner in making this community feel like community, that we want to be a partner in doing that. Everything in life is a big circle. We all change, we make mistakes, and hopefully learn from them, but I think Smoketown's gonna make some huge changes from, what, 80 years ago to now. Just knocking the buildings was awesome, and seeing the difference to how the neighborhoods are. Because there's been a, a lot of, of, of non-investment, disinvestment for decades in urban areas, and, and, and certainly with public housing sites because the, the public housing sites that we're replacing were built you know in the late 30s early 40s so they're very very old outlived their usefulness we certainly got our money's worth uh, but it's time to replace them and we cr can create better housing and deal with the problems that exist at the public housing sites beginning with the concentration of poverty when I moved here Shepherd Square had already been torn down so there was a lot of just empty spaces around here and didn't see a whole lot of people uh, quite frankly when I first moved here and so what I know about Smoketown I've learned over the course of the last year from a lot of conversations from living in the neighborhood from working in the neighborhood and then helping to get the Smoketown Neighborhood Association started back again I'm a part of that and there's a lot of really uh, wonderful people who've been here all their lives that have given me a proper education on Smoketown's history and its importance uh, to the community. Shut 
can't have a pop because that was a, a stepping stone that was, uh, for the people that want to live in the project. But then later they discovered that maybe we should get a better place so our families can have more privacy. And I think that's why we lost so many people that lived in the Smoketown neighborhood. There are so many amazing houses and structures and people in this neighborhood that nobody was really talking about. It's a really significant visual though to tear like tons of housing down, all those yellow bricks, all that dust, all this construction, and then to, you know, something else rises from it. You want to know what the community, the stakeholders in the community think. And we vetted everything with them. Uh, not only Shepherd residents, but stakeholders like churches. You know, there's a number of churches in all these neighborhoods that need to be involved, and just the existing residents. You know, schools, JCPS had a role. So it's very important that you get the input from the community because in the end, you come up with a much better product and, and a product that's much more well received by the people who actually live. We have a church full of people from all over the city and even Indiana with a number of expertise and the like. And uh, because of that, we have a community of faith that um, has a number of different peoples who come into one place, who bring their time, who bring their talents, who bring their uh, competence and skill, and they bring their resources into one institution or community of faith, and through it, we try to impact the community in a positive way, and I believe we've been very successful at doing that. And uh, that's why I prefer a church that has a kind of a metropolitan feel in the sense that there's diversity there. And even though people don't live in the community, they care about the community. And the community is about the people anyway. And so uh, our church, our community of faith, uh, uh, has been interested in and committed to uh, bringing, coagulating all of our resources and time, talents, and treasure together so that we can make an impact in Smoketown. Uh, for the betterment of the community.